This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning, it's Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Following up on Monday's story about the shooting at a public pool in Glen Burnie where one man was killed and two were injured, Anne Arundel County Police have arrested two people in connection with that. During their investigation, they found that a witness had observed a vehicle quickly leave the area. Two males exited the vehicle and hid a gun in the bushes. That witness retrieved the gun and called the police. The police were able to identify the person who hid the gun. He was located and positively identified as Dion Isom Sanders, a 20-year-old male from Glen Burnie. He was initially held without bond at Anne Arundel County Detention Center, but has since been released, and he has been charged with a series of weapons violations. In addition, they executed several search warrants and through some digital evidence obtained from the scene, they were able to identify the shooter. He's been identified as Jacoby Devon Johnson, a 21-year-old from Glen Burnie, and he's been charged with first and second degree murder, three counts each of first and second degree assault, along with firearm-related charges in the death of James Diggs IV. Johnson was taken into custody about 8.30 on Monday evening by Anne Arundel County Police Department along with the Ocean City Police Department and the Maryland State Police when he was stopped during a traffic stop in Ocean City. He was taken into custody without incident and he is currently incarcerated at the Anne Arundel County Detention Center. Police have said this is an ongoing and very active investigation. They are still seeking information and anybody that has any information should contact the homicide unit at 410 410- 222-4731, but kudos to Anne Arundel County Police for at least getting these two off the streets so quickly. In our What the Hell Was That Tax Increase For news, the Annapolis Arts District has donated $10,000 to the city of Annapolis for additional signage. The signs are going to point drivers to state, county, and privately owned parking garages, as well as museums, community centers, memorials, and theaters. Now, the city embarked on a citywide effort to post these directional signs back in July of 2013, and after the pedestrian signs went up in 2017 during the administration of former Mayor Mike Panalides, the remainder of the signs went unfunded. Now, the Annapolis Arts District is stepping up. They're utilizing a grant they received from the Maryland State's Art Council to take care of part of that. Now, the city budget does include money for the remainder of them, but unsure as to why that was stopped. Putting signs around and telling people how to get from point A to point B is a good thing to do. One of the places that should have a sign that if you don't know where it is, shame on you, but Maryland's Banneker Douglas Museum here in Annapolis has just received a $50,000 grant to preserve African-American artifacts. It's part of a $2.2 million larger grant system that the Governor's Office on Community Initiatives announced yesterday afternoon. The upgrades are going to allow the museum to properly store and preserve important pieces of Maryland's African-American history, primarily its fine art and African art collections. Now, the Banneker Douglas Museum is located on Franklin Street, just off of Church Circle, and it is home to more than 12,000 historic objects, exhibition spaces, and an archives library. If you have not been, go see it. It's very cool. Bad news from Maryland casinos for two months in a row. Total revenue from Maryland casinos has dropped again compared to a year ago, according to the Maryland Lottery and Gaming Commission. The state's six casinos reported $142.9 million in revenue in June, which is 4% less than the $148.9 million in revenue in June of 2018. It is the second month that year-over-year revenue has fallen short. Baltimore's Horseshoe Casino recorded the biggest loss over -over year-over-year with a 18.2% dip. MGM National Harbor, which has been the state's top earning casino, also saw its numbers slide down 4.1%. A couple bright spots, Live Casino and Hotel here in Anne Arundel County had a slight uptick at 1.7% increase. Rocky Gap out in Western Maryland saw a 7.5% boost. And the Hollywood and Ocean Downs casinos saw a decline of 39 and 4.8, respectively. 
All right, that does do it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. You never know what's going to come down the pike. If you are anywhere you can give us a recommendation or a review online, please do that. That would be much appreciated. And of course, give us a recommendation and a review to your friends and colleagues. Other than that, you need to hang tight. We have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. He's coming up right after these words about Kegs and Corks Fest, which is coming up on August 17th. Get your tickets now. You get in an hour early and they're a little bit cheaper. Hey, it's Gina Crash. Join me Saturday, August 17th for the Kegs and Corks Festival at the Anne Arundel County Fairgrounds. Tickets benefit the Special Olympics of Maryland and include a souvenir glass, unlimited wine and beer samples, plus live music by Amish Outlaws, Jay Corsi Willis and the Stone Authors, and XPD Band. Enjoy over 80 Maryland wines, 40 craft beers, incredible food, unique arts and crafts, and more. Go now to Kegs and Corks Fest. Dot com for tickets. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Wednesday, July 10th. Yesterday was sunny and warm, and today will be much the same for the Annapolis region, with temps each day topping out between 85 and 92 degrees before a chance of showers and storms returns in the p.m. hours on Thursday now for what should be another sunny and hot period for all of Anne Arundel County from Friday to Sunday, with highs in the upper 80s to mid 90s. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there. Be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. There is a diamond of diamonds. It's from De Beers. Only 14 diamond tears in the world can touch them. Its name, Forevermark. And Zach Reeves is the only jeweler in the Annapolis area that has it. Not only is it beautiful and rare, it has a story, supporting women in diamond-producing areas around the world. So when you give a Forevermark diamond, you don't just give, you give back. Zachary's in Forevermark, a jeweler and a jewel. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. So many different stories in the news, and everyone has an opinion. Here's ours. Boy, Ward 1 Alder woman Ellie Tierney has really poked a hornet's nest. On Monday night, she introduced legislation to increase the parking meter fees at City Dock and two city-owned parking lots by, get this, 100%. Now, instead of the $2 per hour it costs to park down there, it may cost you $4 an hour to park. I get her intention. Make it unattractive and force people to the garages. If they are hell-bent on parking on the best slice of real estate in Annapolis, so be it and let them pay. I am in agreement. The only problem is that we are a lazy bunch and the malls and town centers have really spoiled us. We want to park as close as we possibly can to our destination for the sake of convenience. After some thought on this, I think this is a bit misguided for a number of reasons. Tierney says we can take the circulator that's free. Well, has she ever tried to take it? It never runs on schedule, they claim. There are no obvious designated pickup points, and the drivers are usually too busy sending texts or catching Pokemons on their phone to notice someone trying to wave them down. We have learned that the city is contracting with the new owners of the e-cruisers to provide a golf cart-esque transportation experience up Main Street, out West Street, down Maryland Avenue, over to West Annapolis, and over to Eastport, with the central hub being at the Market House. Hey, Who has that master lease on the market house again? Hmm. Maybe once this is in place, it might be a step toward increasing the pricing. Let's talk about the garages. Hillman is a piece of crap, and it has been in danger for falling down for close to five years now. Literally. A structural engineer gave it a life expectancy of 10 years back in the Moyer administration. But the city keeps putting it off. Mayor Buckley wants to have Harvey Blonder pay for it in return for the hotel on City Dock, but that battle is still being waged. We need more capacity there. And again, asking people to park in the outer garages and shuttle in is not terribly feasible at this point. The Hillman garage is relatively convenient. And once this is replaced, then we might look at raising the parking meter pricing. Tierney says that the increased revenue will help pay for these types of things. Not so much. Despite all the accolades SP Plus seems to get, they are very lax on enforcement. I know literally dozens of people that park at City Dock and rarely, if ever, 
pay, and they never get caught. Eric Evans from the Downtown Annapolis Partnership says that increased parking fees will dissuade people from coming downtown, namely locals, and I wholeheartedly agree. If my $5 hot dog at Pip's Hot Dogs is now going to cost me $9, I'm thinking twice about it. My suggestion? Make City Dock parking free. Yes, free, but only for one hour. The cars will still need to register in the kiosk or the app, and then SP Plus needs to enforce it. Give a car a few $40 tickets, and all of a sudden, that $5 garage sounds like a dream. With an hour of free parking, people can come down and have a fast lunch at some of the fast places like Pip's Hot Dogs, Jimmy John's, The Market House, Mission Barbecue, or Sophie's Crepes. They can run in to grab a bottle of wine at Mills or something from the Iron Rooster store, and then they can leave. This will give people incentive to come downtown. If they are staying longer, dinner and some shopping, well, let's call it dinner because no stores stay open at night, but that's a different rant for a different day. Or maybe an employee wants to park for his whole shift. Now there is an incentive to use the garages. If Alder Woman Tyranny is looking to push cars off of City Dock, again with which I agree, before she does that, she needs to have some place to push them to and also a method of reliably returning the passengers of those cars to their destination. And that's what I'm thinking today. Did you know that you could potentially save hundreds of dollars a year by using a smart thermostat that you can install yourself or that a smart light bulb can help you sleep better? I'm Richard Gunther. I live here in the Annapolis area and I'm the host of the Home On podcast from the Digital Media Zone. I'm joined in each episode by a different guest co-host featuring some of the biggest names in the smart home space, including journalists, technologists, and leaders or founders of companies like Ring, Ikea, Lifex, and more. You'll learn about smart home products you can purchase and set up yourself to turn your own home into a smart home. Find Home On in your favorite podcast app on Spotify or on the web. Just search for Home On in your app of choice or in Google. You could do it right now while you're listening. Add Home On to your podcast lineup and learn how to make your home smarter. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.